So you are about to learn how to make one of those things from any picture that you want. Let me tell you, the first thing that you need to do is take some measurements. This is the lamp I'm gonna use and this is the light bulb I'm going to use. So you need to measure the diameter of this light socket right here. So you take this measurement. Of course, my batteries are dead. So there's the diameter of the socket, and you'll input it into lithfanemaker.com. Other things that you might want to do, get an idea of what kind of size for your lampshade you want. I'm thinking if it were about nine inches tall, then it would be a good size. And if the diameter at the top were eight inches, that would be pretty good. And the diameter at the bottom were 10 inches, that would also be pretty good. So. In metric terms, which is actually what lithofanemaker.com uses, eight inches is approximately 200 millimeters, nine inches is about 225 millimeters, and 10 inches is about 250 millimeters. So those are the settings I'm gonna use. On top of that, you need to make sure that your lamp has a cool light bulb. So I actually just recently got a new light bulb. I'm gonna try out for this project here. It is a color changing light bulb. So here's the bulb and it comes with a remote you can see right here and the remote has all these different options on it you can turn the light on and off and there's a really cool option here where it'll just automatically cycle through all the colors but you can see it's got a color wheel so a bunch of different colors can be produced with this light bulb and that'll save me the hassle of having to print this lampshade in an infinite number of different filament colors to achieve the same effect. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it and we'll just have to see how it goes. If you don't want a fancy light bulb like this that's got a remote control and can change pretty much any color, I think it was about nine dollars or so, um, you can also just get regular bulbs and control the color by the color temperature. If you want a light bulb with a reddish tint you need to select a warm light bulb which would have a color temperature of about 2,000 to 3,000 Kelvin. If you want it to be just plain cool white, then you should select a cool white light bulb that would have a color temperature of about uh, 3,000 to 4,500. And if you want to have a bluish tint, then you should select a light bulb that has a color temperature of 4,500 to about 6,500. And if you want to know more about what color temperature means, I mean, you can think about a black body radiating, like if you stick an iron into a fire, it gets red hot. Well, if you took it even past red hot, and if it didn't melt, which I'm pretty sure it would, it would eventually become white hot, and then blue hot, if you're using like Inconel or something like that, maybe you could get it blue hot. I've never actually seen something blue hot, but that is where the color temperatures come from, because higher, temperature objects radiate higher frequency light and higher frequency light of course means lower wavelength and uh, blue and you know ultraviolet is a shorter wavelength than red so that is more than you ever needed to know to select a light bulb i'm sure you got this in the bag so now let's turn our pictures into a lithophane lampshade first thing you need to do is go to lithophanemaker.com obviously and I'm going to log into my account because I have my settings saved in my account so that I can make a consistent lampshade the way that I want it to be made. So I'm gonna go and click on this account option up here and then I will come back to the main page after I've logged in so that I don't share the length of my password with the world. So now that I'm on the home screen, I just click down here on Lithophane Lamp Maker. You can click on the image or the title and it'll take you there. And now you need to upload your pictures first. So I'm uploading some cute pictures of my kids. So here on this first option, the height control, you can decide whether you want all of the pictures to be cropped equally such that you result in the diameters and the heights that you're looking for. Or you can keep all of the pictures, the aspect ratio they started out with, but then that'll make it so that you can only pick the diameter of the lamp and you cannot pick the height. The height would be forced by the aspect ratios of all these pictures added up. So I'm gonna go with crop photos equally because I want to be able to control the diameter and the height of the lampshade. The next option is the lithophane resolution. 
and I found that a lithophane resolution of 0.25 is pretty good, meaning that the lithophanes it produces look very good without making the lithophane SDL file super large, because if the lithophane SDL file becomes super large, then you're gonna have trouble slicing it, it's gonna take a long time, it'll bog down your computer. A lot of people tie that to their layer height, but I personally think it's unnecessary. But of course, to each his own. So now I put in the top diameter and the bottom diameter, which are already by default the diameters that I want because I have logged into my account. So now I select the number of half waves and how big the waves are. So you can just see what happens by doubling the size of the wave. It becomes more squeezed in. And if I were to have more half waves here, then you end up with a full wave right here and you can make it really squiggly but it starts to look ludicrous um, I just like one you can make the size of the waves positive and then that just makes it pop out instead of getting sucked in and I'm gonna go with one and minus ten here um, the height is also what I want it to be because I've logged in my account so my settings are saved like that the the base width and the height are with respect to the frame here so if I were to make this number larger, you can see that the frame becomes larger. And I'm going to go with a size of 10 here. Um, this is the overhang angle on the top of the lithophane. So basically, if you're comfortable printing with a 60 degree overhang angle, then you can make this 60. If you're only comfortable with printing a 45 degree overhang angle, then you'd want this to be 45. The maximum thickness is the thickness on the lithophane surface at the darkest point of your picture. The minimum thickness is the thickness on the lithophane surface at the lightest point in your picture. And if you want to have an inverse of a lithophane, then you can just invert these and you know do whatever you want. But I make it the default to make a lithophane out of your picture because it's no fun to print out an inverted lithophane and post it to the forums. Everyone's like. Oh man, this looks like something out of a horror movie. So to just avoid that, I make it so it defaults to just a regular lithophane with these values. And the spacing between the pictures is this little gap that I put between each picture on the lithophane lamp so that you sort of have a border around every single picture and it just looks better that way. So the, the spacing brightness makes it so that the spacing that you put on the lamp is either bright or it's dark. If you make it a zero value right here, then it makes it the maximum thickness on that border. If you put a value of one, then it makes it the minimum thickness on that border, which would be a bright border. It used to be that the default was just to make it zero, which would make it as dark as the maximum thickness of your lithophane at the border. But now I've opened it up and made it possible to have whatever brightness you want there. So now on to the interface parameters over here. You can have two different kinds of interfaces to the lamp. You can have a clamp, which you can see right here. It's got this little piece missing so that all of this can flex and you can kind of pop it open and then put it onto your lamp and then pop it on and it clamps onto the lamp socket. Or you can have a ledge interface which just puts a little ledge all the way around here and then this ledge portion can go between the light bulb and the lamp socket. The ledge would go right in here and then hold on to the light socket like that. So both options are available. I personally prefer the clamp. With the clamp, you can control the ledge height, which is this height from right there to right there. And if you wanted it to be really fat, then you could do that. But I like it to not be so tall, and I just make it 25. This diameter is based on what you measure when you're measuring your light socket. You need this diameter to be a little bit smaller than the light socket if you're gonna use the clamp. If you're gonna use the ledge, then you just need it to be a little bit larger than the light socket's outer diameter. And then you also have the cylinder and ledge thickness, and you can just see if you make this 12, then up here in the picture, it becomes much bigger, so I'm going to change it back to what it was, which I think was 2.5. With the spoke thickness, you can control the thickness of these spokes right here, so you can make them really big and stiffer and require more filament, or I just like to keep them at 5 because it's good enough. Spoke depth is the distance from here to down here. You can make that 20, it becomes really tall, or you can just stick with what's default and it's worked every time I've done it. Then up here you have a schematic that shows what all of those different parameters do. After all that, you need to crop your pictures if you selected the kind of lamp that involves cropping. I think I'm just going to make that guy scoot over a little bit to the right so he's a little bit more centered. 
I'm going to scoot that one up a little bit. And then down here, I'm going to scoot this guy over a little bit. And that looks good. So now I just hit the Create STL button. And it'll come down here and it'll say things like, make sure to subscribe to YouTube. And uh, go to Thingiverse and like and subscribe on Facebook. I've got a, a page that'll post updates to lithophanemaker.com. And then also, if you're running into trouble, I've got a Lithophane Makers users group on Facebook that you could go to and join. And you've got a bunch of people talking about what settings they use and their slicers and it's generally what they need to do to make a good Lithophane. I've got a Twitter and an Instagram and, you know, just go ahead and keep it simple and like and subscribe to them all. Of course, I also have a Patreon account which you can get to up here. And you can become a patron, and if you do so, then you will be supporting the continued existence of LithFaneMaker.com because it costs money and it takes effort to keep this thing going. And whenever I see someone new become a patron, it just gives me these jollies that really make me want to keep going. So please consider becoming a patron. Anyways, you probably saw this little thing popped up, which is telling me that it's ready to be downloaded. And it's in a compressed file, and I'll just go ahead and download it. Now I'm going to open up where it was downloaded. So I've extracted the zip file, and I have opened up the folder that was created. And you can see in the folder a settings file, and you can see the STL file in the settings file. You should have all of the settings that were used to create the lithophane. So if you like how this lithophane came out for you, then you can always check the settings file and see specifically what you did. And then here's the STL file, which you just need to put into your chosen slicer. And I actually need to go eat dinner, but I will be right back to slice it for you. So just hang on here for a second. So the lithophane is done slicing now. It took about two minutes to slice, and I've got an i7, maybe 3.2 gigahertz CPU. And it was doing parallel processing during the slicing, and it took about two and a half gigabytes of RAM to slice this roughly 200 megabyte file. So there are some stats for you to consider when you are making your lithophane to ensure that you'll be able to slice it in a timely manner without running out of RAM. The first thing I always do after I'm done slicing is I go to layer view. Now it's got to process some layers, so I'll just zip ahead as soon as that's done. Okay, so the layer view has been rendered. Now I just kind of zoom in and I can look down into the lithophane. And the cool thing about this is it shows you the actual G code. It shows you what the printer is going to try to print. Not the STL file, but what the printer is actually going to do when it's laying down the plastic. One thing that can commonly happen is you can end up with holes in your lithophane if you make it so that the minimum thickness is less than the line width of your printer and slicer setting. You wanna, you know, look around and make sure that there are not any holes in the thing. I don't see any holes. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is you slide down into the lithophane and what this does is it allows you to see every single layer. So right now I am at layer, one 1,736, which would, I guess be about 173 millimeters up. Sorry, navigating around in this beast can be kind of slow and painful. So I just zoomed in to this thick part right here and you can see that it is very solid. So excellent. And I already know that my settings are good because I've used them many times. You may want to check many different spots. You can also make sure that it's going to be solid just by multiplying the line width right here by the wall line count and then multiplying that by two because the lithophane surface is going to have a front and a back. If the number that you get there is larger than the maximum thickness of your lithophane, then you'll have a solid lithophane and you're good to go. So now at this point, you can just save your STL file out and then print it. So I finally got this thing to print by removing the unnecessary added complexity of using OctoPrint. I'm not exactly sure what was causing the problem, but it was consistent with both of my OctoPrint prints that it failed at the exact same point, even with the nozzle in the same position. And as soon as I used the same G code inside of the SD slot, it worked perfectly. Now I just need to scrape it off with my spatula here and check out what it looks like. So I used some brim to print this thing and make sure it didn't curl up off the bed. And I'm going to use an X-Acto knife 
to cut off the brim. I'm also gonna use some special pierce resistant gloves to make sure I don't cut myself. Let me show you what those look like. Now I know a lot of you out there are probably thinking, well, what a weenie, right? But these things are very, very good and you really wanna get some because I've seen a lot of cut fingers and cut hands in the 3D printing forums where people are like going to the hospital while they're using an X-Acto knife because you gotta apply so much force and then it'll just cut right into your finger. And it's completely unnecessary. These are pretty cheap. So this right here is where the clamping portion of the mount attaches. In order to make it fit, you just take this clamp portion and kind of pull it apart. You got a little bit of extra space in there. You can use these spokes and apply a little bit of force and it'll open up a little bit for you. You don't want to apply so much that you break something, obviously but you can just open it up a little bit and then it should just slide right on down. If you've measured everything correctly, it's not gonna come off unless somebody pulls on it. Now you just need to install the light bulb and let's see what it looks like. So I've learned a couple of things while doing this project and the number one thing that you need to know is that you should like and subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get all of the 3D printing and lithophane related tips that anybody could ever need. But the number one thing that you need to do to make this particular project work is measure your light socket. If that doesn't fit, then you're just out of luck and whatever you print isn't gonna work. Now, I do have the default value for lithophanemaker.com, a value that has worked with every single light socket I've ever tried it on. But that doesn't mean that it'll work for every light socket out there, so be sure that you make a lithophane that fits your light. The next most important thing is to make sure that the lithophane surface is solid. You need to go into layer view and go down into the lithophane surface and make sure that you do not see any hollow points in there, because if you see hollow points, it's not gonna work well. The third most important point is to make sure that you have the right minimum and maximum thicknesses for your lithophane surface. To know the correct minimum and maximum thickness, you have to test it for your particular filament. I have found that with Esun Cool White, a 0.6 minimum and a 2.8 maximum work pretty well. So finally guys, thanks for watching and please, 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 please leave suggestions on how the website can be better. I don't know how everyone's using the website and I need you guys to tell me how the website can be better for the way that you are using it in the comments or at lithophanemaker.com's users group on Facebook so that I can make the website better for everybody. Now next up I'm going to have a list of all the patrons that support the website and make all of this stuff possible. If you ever see them in the forums, be sure to give them a like, answer the questions they have, help them out in any way you can because they're helping us all out by supporting this website and making this service possible. I hope to see you all around in the forums and I will catch you later.